Bob Gay, founder of New Rex. Today, we're going to go through the steps involved with installing an automatic timing system. In the New Rex automatic timing system, you get these components. First of all, the automatic timing system torus, which is the centrifugal device that makes the unit work. You get a shaft, you get a retainer, you get a timing wrench, and you get the instructions. These are the tools you're going to need to install this kit. You're going to need a wide flat blade screwdriver, a standard flat blade screwdriver, about a number two. You need a half inch end wrench, you need a 9 16 end wrench, you need a little hammer, and a crank handle. The first step is to move the sector handle all the way up to full retard the position. The second step is to find TDC number one with the timing pin in the front of the motor. You hold that in two with your thumb and you rotate the engine with your crank handle until it just falls in the dimple, just like that. After you get the, the engine into TDC number one, put your pin back in, use your half inch wrench. The next step out. is to take the distributor out. We'll start off by loosening up the hold down nut that locks the screw into place. And then we're going to loosen up that screw, good and loose. And when we get the linkage disconnected, the spark plug wires off, we lay it over. Now we're going to take the carburetor off. The first thing we want to do is disconnect the linkage and the choke linkage. We want to take the fuel line off. We'll get the line off and then we're going to take these two screws out that hold the carburetor onto the manifold. The next piece we're going to take off is this oil return pipe. It's a good point to bring up right now is the fact that this valve chamber is full of oil. As soon as that oil return pipe came off, you're going to get oil coming out of there. As soon as you get the valve cover off, you're even going to get more oil out. So you better get a drain pan underneath your engine. So this valve cover has to come off. We're looking at the bolts here. They're all half inch. But you don't have to take the intake manifold or the exhaust manifold off in order to do this job. At this point, for demonstration purposes, we're going to switch to this cutaway engine block that we use at the shows to demonstrate this device. The first thing we want to take out now that we've gotten the valve cover off, we took the oil return pipe and the carburetor off, on the real engine, the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold would still be on here. So at this point, we're going to remove the lower distributor shaft using a pair of needle nose pliers and then we're going to take out the original tube spring that holds the oil pump drive down. Now that we've taken the tube spring out which holds the oil pump drive down we're going to replace it with this u-shaped piece. This is the new retainer and it's going to go between these two bosses. The bosses are built into the engine block and you'll notice when you start fitting this into place, you have to compress it a little bit with your fingers and then start tapping it side to side. Now this, this sometimes takes a while to get started. So just be patient, get them in a little bit on each side, tap them down until they're flush. So when the valve cover goes on there, it's just on the edge of the valve cover opening. This is the Taurus device that goes on next. If you notice, it's indexed. It only goes on one way. So when you put it in the slot down here for the oil pump drive, you'll have to rotate it until it just falls into that notch. There's only one way it'll go. You don't want to put it in crooked, put it in straight so that it falls down its seats all the way. This is a good time to note that we want to take our oil can out and oil this whole device. You can't put too much oil on it. Pre-oil it all you can, get it nice and oily. Then you're going to install this shaft. This shaft has, the, has a little pin in it. 
The original shaft did not have that pin. The original shaft was a little longer with no pin. This shaft does have the pin and the pin goes down into the device. And it, the notch, that pin goes right into this notch on the Taurus. So we're gonna slide it through from the top of the motor down into that device. We're gonna rotate it till it falls in just like that. At this point in time, we want to note that the shaft goes down through a tunnel from this distributor point all the way down to the device. But in that tunnel, we have a head gasket. You want to make sure that your head gasket hole is the proper size. It should be the entire opening of that orifice to give this shaft plenty of room so it doesn't rub on a piece of head gasket and interfere with the function of the automatic advance. The next thing we're going to involve ourselves with is putting the distributor back in. The reason why we're going to do it now is because we still have access to the shaft, which will make alignment with this index key easier. So the first thing we want to do is put the distributor back in the hole just like it came out. And remember, you've got an index pin on the cylinder head too, so you've got to line it up as well. Put that back in, start wiggling things around. And when it's in place and it's lined up, it'll actually fall down to the point where it's flush with the block with no gap. As soon as that's in there, you're good. If it doesn't go in immediately, you can actually take the cap off and rotate things around this way to help facilitate getting those two to mate together. Once they're in, take your flat blade screwdriver, tighten the distributor in place, and then tighten the lock nut with your 9 16 wrench. Your distributor cap can go back on at this point. At this point, we want to make sure that the vise is working freely. It has no obstructions. You've cleared any kind of gasket material in the way. And you want to make sure that the cylinder head isn't a little cockeyed in relation to the holes where the shaft goes through. So when you actuate the device, the rotor should actually rotate at the same rate and spring right back, just like this is. As you can see, that's rotating, that's springing up and down, and the rotor is rotating for its advanced function. Now that we've got the valve cover back on, and the oil return pipe back on and we got it tight now. Recheck your bolts. Incidentally, if there's any of the gaskets on a program like this, while you have it apart, of course, that's the time you want to change your gaskets. My gaskets were fine, but it's something that you don't check very often, so you might as well look at them before you button them up. As you notice, I'm still putting the screws in here. I've left everything loose. The line's loose, but they're all started. I don't tighten anything up until I have everything in place, particularly the fuel line and the carburetor, because you don't want to have to fight those threads and cross-thread something in the process. So we got things getting pretty close, so we'll tighten up the carburetor now fuel lines just about in place. And we'll tighten up the fuel line now. These cars are very simple to work on. They require very few tools. And with a little patience, even non-mechanical types could tighten these things up. They're very logical. They don't require a degree in mathematics and mechanical engineering to assemble. Just pay attention to the way you took things apart, follow the directions, and if you're not sure, take a picture. We do it all the time, just to make sure we get things back the way they originally were. So you can always have something to refer back to. Now we're going to hook the choke line up. 
hook up the throttle linkage, and we'll be done. I'm going to reinstall the, the timing advance rod. Well, most people ask, well, you got an automatic advance. Why do you need that rod? Why do you need the sector connected inside the, inside the car? Well, you don't. But if you do have it on there, nobody will know you have the automatic advance, for one thing. And secondly, this will hold the plate in place so it can't possibly advance. If that sector's all the way up, you know that this plate is exactly where it's supposed to be. If you don't have that rod on there with that sector in place, the plate can actually move, and you don't want it to move. You don't want it to move. That would compound the amount of advance that the automatic device is giving you. Now that you've installed the Nurex automatic timing system, the only thing left to do is to time the motor. We gave you a Nurex new wrench timing tool in the kit. Go to newrex.com, look up the video, and it'll describe completely how to time the engine. Your automatic timing system makes your Model A Ford run like a modern car. You don't have to mess with the sector anymore at all. Not to start the car, not to go fast, not to stop at a light, nothing. It's all automatic now, your automatic feature. Just remember, leave the sector all the way up and the car will be just fine.